What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be on the race car doing a little bit of a 3D scan, 3D model and finish it up with a 3D print. All right, so today we're going to be using the Revo Point range scanner. Uh, the scanner is a little bit new to me. Um, in previous videos, their smaller scanner, I'll show you. So here's the range 3D scanner. In previous videos, I've used their um, Pop 2 scanner, uh, which I love that thing. I've scanned a bunch of stuff. Um, I think I've done enough now where in the video description below, I think I have a playlist of anything I've like scanned or other scanning videos. This will be the first scan video with the range. Now the range is cool, especially for me, because it, like the name says, range. Um, it's made for scanning like larger areas. Uh, the pop is a little more detail oriented. You can stitch scans together, uh, but this kind of just gives it all to you in one scan. So what we're gonna be working on is this B pillar area. Very rough transitions between the quarter window and uh, you know B pillar, roll cage, all that stuff. I kind of just want to finish it out a little bit um, by making some sort of, I don't know, filler thing or something. Don't really know what I'm going to get into, but I need to start with a scan. Now you can see the blue tape everywhere. The reason I had to do the blue tape, scanners do not like carbon fiber, clear or shiny or black, which is kind of all I have in this area. <laughs> so the tape is what the scanner can lock onto and scan very easily. So kind of just like the pop too, oh, sorry for the reflection. Um, we're gonna go to scan. Uh, I'll do high accuracy features, no color. I don't need color or anything like that. Hit okay. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold this uh, until I see excellent range at the top. And then I'm gonna let the, you see on the bottom left, I'm on auto. So that actually looks pretty good. So with my thumb, I'm gonna hit the scan button. Come up, around. There's the edge of the roll cage that we need. And then stop it with the little button right on the back here. Um, and honestly, this scan, for what I wanna design and do, that's all I really need. So for the scan, honestly, that, that's it. It's that simple to do the scan. Uh, now the modeling, especially for me, <laughs> that's a whole other story. Uh, we'll get into that. Uh, but yeah, scan is done at this point from the software. Uh, you know, we can mesh it uh, and then export it and, you know, work with it uh, in any CAD software of your choosing. Um, so we'll get into that now. All right, guys. So here we are in Onshape. And you can see the part that I ended up designing, which is this orange thing. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. Uh, if we get rid of, oops. You can get rid of this surface that I had to create. And then there's pretty much our scan that we just did. You know, if you zoom in, you can see all the vertices that produce the scan. Uh, we'll do this little rollback bar. We'll just go up and kind of go one by one. I put a plane here uh, just to kind of give me a reference surface uh, just to kind of start from. Ended up not really using it. I then ended up snapping all of my 3D fit splines, which are not shown. Which, there you go. So now, um, all of these 3D fit splines, I ended up making this surface right here from a fill tool. Uh, whoops, it's still off at the moment. So there you go. So that surface is practically right on the surface of the scan, give or take a tiny bit that you can see. That surface was important because off of that is the tangent to make this curved line right here along with the lower which would be this one right here which was uh, this 3D fit spline that I did earlier and this one right here so if we were to click on this 3D fit spline 
So I'll show you how they kind of work. You can see how we pick the two vertexes that we want to use. The other one, oh, just off screen, it's this one up here, and this one. So you can see how the start direction, we ended up picking this surface right here that we made a couple steps ago. So that way it just comes straight off like we need it to. And then this magnitude is basically how you can change how much curvature you want if you need to clear something specific or you know you want to tighten it up a little bit you can change that to get a different curvature right through here we did the same thing with this lower one now this fill to make this surface um, I don't know if that was actually necessary or not <laughs> um, then we move to a loft now the loft was this line lofted out to this line and the guides that we used were the curves that we did just the prior step so you can see how that gives us our surface to fill out this whole area so you can see how we're starting to take shape um, and one of these fit splines is actually this line right here across the roll bar now that we have our surface oops, all we need to do is thicken it and the reason it's not there I had it off earlier so there you go so we thickened it to how thick we wanted to print the part uh, I think it was 046, uh, 0.047 um, which I believe is 1.2 millimeters which on my 3D printer I got a 0.6 millimeter tip so it's basically there's two walls with the printer and you're done so after the thicken uh, this sketch right here which was actually off of this plane that I made earlier um, let's see so you can see how it's a nice square straight edge and then from that sketch that's what kind of gave us a real straight line right along here that extrude is just an extrude remove and there you go we kind of have our a line that meets up with the roll bar um, our two curves that make the loft guides and then kind of just clean up the edge right here so it's a nice straight line and honestly that's all there is to this one so what we're going to do is go send it to our printer and print it out. Alright, so here's the part printed on our Ender 5. And uh, you know what? You can see printing stuff this thin, you can see how much it moves. A little tiny bit of uh, like stringing and maybe some weird bit, but you know, uh, all things considered, I think this looks pretty good. Alright, here we are with the print. Uh, See if I can do this one-handed, uh, it should fit like right in the notch of the window. Right about there so I guess, uh, it looks pretty good. And that curve, nice and tight to the roll cage. Alright, looks pretty good. So to install, uh, I'm going to use a little bit of two-faced tape right here for this side. I think on the inside, I'm just going to go to my good old trusty black duct tape, um, you know, as you can tell race car not going for some show quality stuff uh, kind of just a combination of what's quick and easy so I can kind of move on to the next project all right so here we are taped on uh, tape on the front this thing's plenty strong enough for any little bit of like air loading it will see I'm going to finish out this lower I'm going to cut like a little carbon fiber strip to make it look like a little trim piece throughout this video if you're wondering why I didn't really go all the way up I'm going to kind of do some sort of trim something or other I'll show you the other side real quick uh, I believe I jumped into this video and I already had everything off um, and the old side look kind of like this <laughs> you know good old duct tape uh, like a real hard like edge right here and everything and, you know just kind of looks like crap you know not nice and smooth and we actually had uh, a 98 Mustang in the wind tunnel where we made like a little cheap uh, cardboard closeout panel right here. Um, so we actually have wind tunnel data on doing a little closeout fixture like this. 
it was like it was like a pound of drag nothing crazy funny enough we picked up like two pounds of downforce probably just from the simple fact that like you know the air kind of going down and to the wing <laughs> tiniest bit cleaner um we're talking minor numbers here it was more so uh, a little bit of a 3d scan you can see how easy it is to scan stuff with the revo point range um, i'll put a link to that exact scanner in the video description below if you want to check that out and just kind of you know clean up this area so and once i get that scan uh 3d modeling is probably what i need the most practice at so you know any tips please comment below because you know that's not my strong suit this is kind of a fun little project where it's something that's not really like critical um, but working with like forms and surfaces you know is is something uh, I just need to practice at. so this was kind of a good project for that um, so yeah that's where we're kind of gonna wrap this one up um, pretty quick easy one hope you liked it please hit that subscribe button as always thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the next one